Hello, we are the Association for Child and Adolescent Mental Health, or ACAM for short. Uh, my name is uh, Sherman Imran. I'm a consultant psychiatrist, child and adolescent psychiatry. I work here at Children's Children's Trust and uh, developed, uh, organized this uh, program uh, with help from our presenters and with help from uh, ACAM. So I'll just keep the introductions very brief. Uh, the idea for this day actually came from last year when we did a similar day quite close after the MEN Arena events, quite soon after that really, because all of us in some way or the other had been involved or struck by it really, and it just felt like it would be such a good opportunity to bring all the agencies that work with young people and parents in this region together to kind of have a bit of a think about how has it affected us, what sort of services have been, have sort of, you know, kind of been working on this front as a result and just a bit of reflection and on that day we decided that it would be lovely to meet one year on to have a look at the wonderful work we heard about last year how that has sort of you know progressed and what people's reflections were so this day comes out of that uh, so it's been uh, a collaboration between ACAM and the GMMH trustee here who provided the uh, venue which has sort of enabled us to keep the event free which has been wonderful really so just a few things about ACAM I think the packs are here please have a look at it I'm a member of ACAM myself but there's a Northwest academic branch as well we are quite active in uh, organizing thinking about programs like this one today and uh, with help from our lovely speakers from the region that we try to use our networks so we can ask them to help us as they've done today really so I would encourage you to please look into it become a member the fee is quite minimal compared to some of the other sort of you know, kind of organizations I, I feel and uh, you will get a chance to kind of uh, at quite a small fee to attend educational events for your CPD for your interest within the Northwest and you can also attend those outside of the, in the other regions as well I think the fee would be all in there I think there are different levels of memberships now and different incentives in there I won't go into detail of that because it's been described very well on the website so please go on the website. I'm here, Stacey's here today as well. So if you wanted any more information during the solution of breaks, you could do that. The program is uh, just going to start now. We'll try our best to stick to times as much as we can. About 2.30, we'll get about 15 minute break for tea and coffee. And then we'll try to aim and finish by about four. Okay, so three main presentations. And the first one is from 42nd Street. Uh, which is a sort of, you know, kind of lovely project uh, in Manchester working with young people and we're providing psychological support and assessment and they've been quite actively involved uh, since the MEN Arena incident. So I've got Mariam Avabi here uh, with uh, Nicole Warburton. Uh, thank you very much, Nicole, for coming in. So I will let them introduce themselves and they'll take us through their presentation. Thank you so very much. I'll help you with your chairs. I have a bit of yeah. Hi, my name is Mariam. Um, I'm a psychotherapist working at 42nd Street. I'm actually, um, my substantive post is at South Manchester Counties, but I've been seconded to 42nd Street for a year. So my presentation, I'm just gonna talk you through um, the project very briefly, and then I'm very fortunate to have one of the young people who's used the project who's agreed to um, tell you a little bit about her experiences. I'm gonna do it in a way of a dis discussion, and then afterwards you might be able to ask some questions if you like. Um, so, um, the project is, uh, was funded for one year from 2018 to 2019, although it started a little bit earlier. Um, I think they started looking at um, offering some therapeutic support around October time, but I came in post in January 2018. Uh, it's funded by the Big Lottery and Court Foundation, um, and it's two pronged really. One. Um, one aspect of it was just generally offering therapeutic services to any young person who's been affected by the Manchester Arena attack. And the idea of that was that they needn't have necessarily been there, if they've been affected in any way, and I have been offering support to a young person who wasn't there or was very impacted by uh, the stories one of her friends told her. Um, so it, they can be affected in any way. I'm also offering, offering some support to a young person who received a lot of um, racism because um, she's a Muslim young woman after the attack. So it's anybody who's been affected by the attack, not necessarily young people who are there. 
Um, the other kind of part of our work was offering su support, consultation and training to communities affected by the attack. So the idea was that well, we, uh, the Big Lottery and um, Co-op really wanted to um, seek out communities who have been ne uh, negatively impacted by the attack. Obviously that's the most obvious of the living community and the Muslim community. And what we wanted to do was, in consultation, to try and offer them some support and to think about um, how they could support their young people and how we could support them to kind of get over what had happened. Um, as a kind of offshoot, we've also ended up offering mental health and resilience training and information to any hard to reach communities, I think, because we found that um, actually some communities were really hard to reach, so we kind of widened it a little bit more. Um, so the therapeutic support that we offer young people uh, the age range is the age range that we work with the 42nd Street, so 13 to 25. And we offer a range of therapeutic support, so cognitive behavioural therapy, uh, obviously uh, focus on trauma, trauma-focused counselling, and the MDR. So the community work, so we've done some work related to the attack, so example, supporting students that um, within a school, so um, we worked with uh, a certain high school, well, lots of different high schools, but say on the, on the day of the anniversary, supporting their pupils. Um, we've done uh, help at the Resilience Hub, um, kind of their family days, and also done some resilience and wellbeing workshop at primary school that was directly, they felt very linked to the attack because they had students who were from the bereaved, two of the bereaved families. Um, what we found is that it was quite difficult to work with the communities who had been negatively affected. So, for example, the Libyan community. I think what we heard is that those communities were affected very negatively straight after the attack. So, for example, what we were being told is that if you had a young man who was of Libyan descent around about the same age as the bomber, you might get, uh, you might have your house raided and you might have <coughs> taken to police. Uh, for questioning for quite a long time, regardless of whether he had any contact. And obviously this was this really traumatised the families and the young people um, those families came from. But I think as time has gone by, those families have not wanted to do, want anything to do with services. I think they, they found a time where there were lots of services really focused on them, not necessarily in a positive way. So by the time we came along, nearly a year later, uh, they didn't really want to work with us. And actually what we found is that the work that we may have thought we want, we want to offer, say for example, work around trauma, it's not necessarily what those communities want. What they wanted was to organise and give back to Manchester and do, do stuff for themselves. Like, you know, so there's a, for example, um, a group of uh, Libyan youth community who want to give back to Manchester and want to be involved in um, in anything that's going on to show their kind of support and their love of the city really. So I think what we ended up doing is to kind of widening our reach to look at what uh, to more hard to reach communities. So we've done things like well well being and resilience. We've kept that kind of resilience idea uh, for parents of children with special needs in Newton Heath, uh, doing some work with vulnerable young people at Berry College and um, doing things within um, the communities, the Muslim community, but maybe not necessarily calling it like a trauma workshop or linking it to the MEM, but just doing stuff around well-being and resilience, because we felt like that, that would that would be more of a way in to kind of get discussions going about what, um, what communities might need. So just some very basic, it's a very small project, it's me and a few of my colleagues who offer the, the other range of therapeutic services. So, uh, as you see, the ethnicity, as you would expect, is mainly white British uh, area. Um, this project is different to the other projects of 42nd Street because we are GM-wide. In terms of other, uh, other projects work that we work with, the 42nd Street is very related to the areas that we work with. But this project it was GM-wide, so as long as young people could get to us, uh, we would see them. In terms of age breakdown, as you can see, the kind of 13 to 15 age group are prevalent, are probably the most. Now, in terms of the, ter uh, the therapeutic interventions, CBT and the, ca the trauma counselling have been the, the things that young people have chosen most. So some learning from the project. 
Um, young people like to be offered a choice in their therapeutic support, so what we do is we carried out an assessment for young people, and we talk through uh, that all of these supports are trying to help them with the trauma that's happened, trying to help them process what happened, and to be able to get on with their life and have this, this thing not impact on their everyday life. But that there's different types of uh, therapeutic services that work for young people. Um, some of the young people who've chosen the more kind of counselling uh, aspect have been young people who perhaps have had other things going on. So yes, they've had this uh, massive trauma of being impacted by the attack, but they may have had other things going on, maybe, maybe other traumas or other stresses that were around for them before that happened. Therapy times have ranged from six to eight months. Um, obviously the time of the anniversary was very difficult and a very lots of young people needed support around that time. I thought this has not always been weekly, so I guess for some therapeutic, uh, so uh, you know, we might offer a certain number of therapies, uh, therapy weeks weekly, but then you might find a young person's getting better and wants to kind of try out uh, how things have been, so you might not see a young person for two or three weeks. The learning from community works, as I was saying, the community is most affected negatively, so the Libyan community do not necessarily want trauma intervention. I mean, it was never our intention to go and tell them what we thought they needed. I think any work that we wanted to do was going to be co-created, but I think it's we've kind of got the message that really what we perhaps might think they might need is not what they, they would want. Um, Obviously, we found that other communities who are hard to reach do benefit from support around mental health and resilience, and there's lots of other traumas going around in different communities that, you know, that need kind of some support here. Some quotes that we got from young people. I've uh, really improved since coming to 42nd Street. I always feel heard by my counsellor. I believe she's helped me through hard and times and difficulty. My mental health has definitely improved. 42nd Street stay by our sides while we found the solutions to our problems. I had an image of a medical environment and being in a white room with someone judging me every word I say, but for the second street is a relaxed and safe environment. I was given a clear explanation of the process. So that's just some of the things, obviously, you know, qualitative data is just really important and just really important to hear the voices of young people. And it feels like Especially being able to be seen so quickly because obviously our project they didn't we, we, you know as soon as uh, we hit the ground we were seeing young people so it meant that the assessment process and the waiting process has been very quick and I think that has been really helpful. Um, so I've I've been very lucky working with uh, Nicole and uh, she's agreed to do uh, we're going to do a little discussion about her support because i think that will help you understand a little bit um what i would i, I just want you to understand is that, uh, that one of the things i'm really impressed by is nicole agreed to this six months ago so at a time when she perhaps wasn't feeling fantastic maybe didn't even know she would be able to do this i felt she could and i asked her six months ago i have continually asked her whether she's still up for it and she's continually said yes but I just find that really amazing that such a long time ago when we were planning this, she, was, she said yes, even though she wasn't maybe feeling at her best. Before we do our discussion, is there anything anybody wants to ask about the project? Before we move on? Okay. I just want to make yes. something. I should have yeah, said it. Sure. Do you know the kind of discussions we're having today? If at any point anybody feels a bit overwhelmed emotionally or needs a bit of time out, that's absolutely fine, you know. You can take a bit of time out. There's space outside here. You can go out for a bit as well. And just let us know if you need anything. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Any questions? So thanks for coming me to do this. Can you tell, me, tell us a bit about yourself? Um, so I'm 18 years old. I like dancing, singing, acting, like anything to do with all of you. Um, I like baking, Victoria sponge cake. <laughs> um, I live at home with my mum, my dad, my brother, and my dog. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit, because I think what was really interesting about your experience, Nicole, is that you sought some help before you came to 42nd Street and before the attack. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so at first, like, I had 
previous lot my father problems with the Manchester. It started like when I was in high school. Um, I didn't actually get health and tours in like year 11 when I went to healthy minds and it turned out that I was like suffering quite badly with like anxiety and depression. And my first counsel was like amazing, like she just made me fall in love with counseling because like she helped me through so much and like she really cared for me and listened to me and she didn't treat me so much as like a patient and just like a piece of data but like it was like speaking to a friend and like anything, any worries that came to her with she helped me through everything. She'd be tired for like whenever she possibly could. Um, and then I changed counsellors to a different counsellor who unfortunately wasn't as good with me. Um, they kind of treated me more as data and ticking boxes and like they'd be sat and I'd be speaking and they'd like doodling things and just not really paying attention to what I had to say. Like when I was speaking about something, obviously at that point I was doing CBT, so I'd try and say something and maybe it was a bit off topic to what I should be focusing on, so they wouldn't really go with what my other problems was. They was just trying to focus on the one thing. So I just think it's like important to remember that like, some counsellors are good for particular individuals and can actually sort of make it worse for you. So it's important to find the right counsellor. It's important for like organisations to make sure that each person has the right person for them and checks in with them, making sure it is the right person. Um, and then I was okay for quite a while after that. Um, but then the attack happened and there was a lot of new emotions coming through in terms of anxiety but then also a lot of sort of old things coming back as well. Um, Can you tell me a little bit obviously not in great detail about what happened? So I was still in like the building like where the stage was when it happened. We was like just about to leave and we just heard like a big bang and at first like we didn't really know what it was like. We sort of had a feeling but it was like oh maybe it's just like a speaker or something like that and then there ended up being like some girls running down some stairs and like screaming and then everyone was like sort of into chaos. Um, that's when everyone sort of realised. Luckily, I didn't really, I didn't suffer physically, and I didn't like see anyone who was injured, um, which I think would have made it a lot worse for me. But like, it's not affected me. Well, what was the effect on you? Do you think after you said some old feelings came up as well as new ones? So, first of all, I ended up quitting college, um, which I wasn't necessarily about I mean, I kind of went to that, but like obviously I'm not having a proper education so um, and then I had anxiety about going out into like crowded spaces, about being around people, I sort of isolated myself for quite a while. A lot of like my relationships suffered because I was very overprotective of people, I wanted to know where people were, that they were safe like all the time. Um, I was just very depressed, like suicidal at some points and like it made me feel like a bad person like I felt really guilty like because at the end I sort of just got in the car and just home and like that made me feel really guilty that like, I was a bad person and it was more of an attack on myself as well at points because even though I sort of didn't differentiate the two and yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> and then what made you seek support again? So after sort of my previous like experience, I didn't really want to seek it at first, like I didn't want to go back to counselling. But then I went to a like conference type thing for a little and met my aunt with voice energy. And then yeah, just you know, And how is it how are you now and how has it kind of impacted on your life to think right now? <laughs> um, like I gained a lot of confidence through like the work that we did like I would be able to come and speak to everyone and like be able to sit and actually listen to like the conversations and what other people are going to be saying today about like having a panic attack and being like really depressed for the next few weeks after it but like I know now that I'm like I can do that and be okay and like I don't take things out of myself now like I don't think about that and think oh I'm a bad person it's just the attack and I think realising that like 
it's okay to upset them. And that's quite normal like, when it comes to speaking about it or it comes to like anniversaries of it, like I'm about to feel upset about it. Yeah. But it's just important to not let that come into like weeks and weeks of depression. And like working through this brought up a lot of other like tra past traumatic experiences that have happened that I've always sort of pushed to the back of my mind and not addressed. Um, and I've never spoken to anyone about it and I was like, now's the time to speak about it and Marielle helped me like work through that as well and like I'm okay with that and I've accepted that now um, and actually be able to play from it. Um, and like I'm able to go out into private spaces, I'm able to talk to people, I'm able to listen to music again without like freaking out and yeah. Just Can you tell everyone what you're doing as well because you've got a job yeah. and so plans. I completed my level two apprenticeship in teaching and learning last year, which was quite a struggle at times, but like I got through it and I passed. And at times, like even the people that was like running it and helping me with my course and everything, like didn't know if I was going to be able to pass because I was having panic attacks at the start and not being able to go to work. But within the last three months, like from working with Mary Allen, it just completely changed. And they even said the like people I worked with was like, grown with so much confidence we've seen the change and it's amazing so I ended up passing that and then I've now got a job working in a high school uh, full time job as a teacher assistant and then next year I'm planning on going to the evening to study council. Mm -hmm. um, so what would what would you think as you've had quite a lot of experience in mental health services so what do you think would be the message that you would like to give professionals about you know support I think we just like treat each individual as an individual. Like don't just presume because you have one person with quite a similar case as what the other person has, it's gonna be exactly the same and like really listen to them. Like I know sometimes you need to make notes and write things down so you remember things, but like still try and engage them and listen to them as much as you can. And if there is another problem and they want us to talk about that, even if you need to focus on that one thing, like you need to also address other problems because that could be playing a big part in the problem that like you're trying to focus on and address. And I think like just be try and make as much time as, as you can, obviously like you only have that one little slot, but like you know, Mario was said like to me like if you are feeling really down or worried about something, email me, text me and I'll try and get back to you wherever possible and that's like a big help even if you don't get back to them. Like just knowing that there is someone that you can speak to and you feel it low you don't have to wait until your next session is really important. And I think the big thing as well is like involving like families. Like I know it's like confidentiality and things like that. But like at the end of the day, they're going home like to their family. They're the people that they're spending the most time with. And if they're going home and their family don't know how to deal with it, they don't know how to deal with the panic attacks and all the other things, then they're not actually gonna get help, not gonna benefit from anything because they're just gonna go home and feel down again. So trying to give advice and support to the families as well as well. And there was something else you wanted to say as well because you did find that resilience day, a drop day really yeah. helpful to you and you there was a message about meeting with the young people that you wanted. Yeah, so I like at the I think I made a new friend that I'm all the time and she's like helped through a lot and I've helped her through a lot and we um, are also part of like the Facebook group as well and it's just really good to have people to speak to like 24 7 people who really like understand what you're going through um, and it's just really helpful to have more people around and have a good if you can try and bring people together as well like it's good to have that one-on-one -on -one so you can work yeah. through your own things but having other people who really understand you really know what you've been through I think as well, um, try and just just really like educate as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. Like, not just like obviously I know like a lot of people who work in like other communities and other like schools and things like that, but like just realising that it is still happening. Like I work in high school, like I see that some sort of things like lesson plans and things involving the Manchester topic, it's just still not the road to like to this day. Like, so it's hard to get on every school. Yeah, 
and I've had that feedback that some young people have felt like the schools are do lockdowns or you know they'll talk about bombings and things without kind of any warning and that can be really difficult to answer. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> 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 That's fine. You, like what you were saying about how like you go like maybe have a few weeks where you don't see them. Yeah. Like I think like when you have like mental health and people put you on say medication when you have antidepressants and things, you don't just stop the medication and that's it. As soon as you feel better, you slowly cough it. I think that should be the same thing in counseling, even though they might feel better, it's important to not stop it because once you suddenly have that support taken away from you, that can be really scary just bring things back automatically. So it's like if you can just slowly maybe give it two weeks and then three weeks and then leave it longer until they are fully That's the process that we're doing. <laughs> so, thank you, Nicole. I feel it's been a real privilege working with you. Thank you. Is there anything anybody wants to ask Nicole? Yeah, I just appreciate that's okay. Thank you so much, firstly, for coming. And like you said, it's it's quite intimidating standing for the professionals and sports. Well, so I really appreciate that. I suppose I was wondering, you said quite a few things about the nature of the relationship that the person you work with was really important, um, but then you also talked about counselling and CBT as well, and I suppose I was wondering from your perspective what was more important, was it more about the relationship for you with the person you worked with, or was it more about the type of therapy you had, so whether it was counselling, CBT, I'm not sure what it was you had with um, Marion, but, but yeah, I was just wondering what was the most important thing for you, the type of therapy you did, or, or the relationship with the, the therapist really? I think, for me, I think the relationship is more important because I think that if you don't have a good relationship with your counsellor, it doesn't matter what counsellor type you're doing, it's not going to work. <laughs> like, but if you do have a relationship and you do choose the wrong counselling type, I think it's important to have a choice in what counselling type you do because not everything works for certain people. But I feel like if you have a good relationship with your counsellor and you choose a counselling type that's not working, you'll have the confidence to say this doesn't work. To be part of the advancement of child and adolescent mental health, visit www.acamh.org.